you know, it's hard to do these things when you're covering a team that's 0-3. It's not fun for us. I'm sure it's not fun for you. I remember in my years of covering Coach Joe Gibbs with the Washington football team, he always said you learn a lot about your team through adversity, maybe more than you do through success. And I'm wondering what are you learning about your team through this 0-3 start? Yeah, I think I wasn't been doing this 31 years and I don't know if I've ever been more encouraged in a loss than I was Saturday. I mean, losses are losses and there's no moral victories, but I was encouraged because I thought we played better. And I saw, I saw Navy football in the first half. You know, I saw us coming off the football. I saw us doing things. Uh, so there, there are things in there that I hadn't seen in a while against a really good Houston team that I was encouraged that I knew it was, it was in there. Uh, we, obviously we have to do it longer, but I was encouraged. I mean, we, we had a chance to win that football game. You have the ball there at the end. Um, you know, I got a chance to tie it up, but so I was encouraged, you know, just from the standpoint of we had a chance to win that game. Uh, the, the other two games, obviously we didn't play so well, but so that's the encouraging part, you know, Dan. and so, Everybody tries to put, um, I guess in coaching, you always press forward. So, I, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, you said this isn't fun for me. It's my job. I mean, this doesn't bother me. I mean, I just, I mean, we just keep pressing forward. We do this. We're going to continue to keep working. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't know because I don't, I don't know how to respond to people because, you know, I, I get condolence letters from people like, you know, well, many people that are really good friends and send me letters or people send me motivational speeches and different things. And I mean, this is what we do. The thing that we're trying to do is just continue to keep building our players. That's the key, keep building them. And so I was encouraged. And that's what I told our team. I was encouraged because I, I saw the way we fought. Our kids left everything on the line. We had one of our team captains, you know, try to play injured, you know, Kevin Brandon. So it shows you what type of kids we have. And against a really good Houston team, we had a chance to win. And we feel like, you know, there's some things we have to improve on. But I, I saw improvement, Diane. So that's why I'm encouraged And as we press forward. One quick follow-up, because there are so many folks. You know, you're wearing this really tough stretch for you guys. So outside of the word encouraged, you know, what is the message to your team as you go through tough team after tough team after tough team? coming up yeah you, it, and it's really you know people always get on Belichick for saying certain things we're on to the Browns or whatever but really in this profession that's the only way you can look at it you don't look back at Houston you watch the film see how you can improve and all of our arrows are only on UCF right now that's it we're not thinking about anybody else not thinking about any kind of stretch you know we weren't thinking about UCF last week we were just thinking about Houston and now that's that's where all of our errors are. I was just focusing. Okay, how can we continue to improve? Really, it's it's you know the saying of one and zero. Oh, that's really what sports are. Every game is different, um, and you just play that game, and then you move on to the next one. You put all your arrows into that preparation, then move on to the next one. So that's been our message. I mean, September is over, but that's over with, and now we got to find a way to get. You know, started a new month with our first game in UCF, and we know they're a really good football team, and we're going to have to play really, really well to have a chance to even, you know, to compete with them. Thank you. Scott Wyckoff. Hey, Coach. Scott Wyckoff at WBAL Radio and the Navy Football Network. With what you've seen both in practice over the last couple of weeks and what you saw in the Houston game, what's going to be the, the focus that you want to build on, the positives out of that heading into UCF? Well, it's, I mean, it's really easy. We just got to keep building off it. We thought we had two good weeks of practice, and I thought it showed. I thought we improved. But a main focus has always been do not turn the ball over. As I thought our line played really well. But that one center QB exchange, whoever's fault it is, quarterback or center, it doesn't really matter. That one center QB exchange trumped everything else. You know, we recognize who we are. We know we can't turn the ball over to have a chance to win. And so that turnover, you know, gave them the ball in the whatever the, you know, 23-yard line or whatever, 24-yard line going in. That was a killer. 
and also special teams. We've had way, way, way too many big special teams, negative plays against us in these first two games than I can remember in years. You know what I mean? It just, so that's really been the focus. Continue to keep working, continue to keep doing your job, which our guys have done a great, I mean, of working, our guys have done a great job of that. Um, but we got to minimize our mistakes. We're not over, we're not good enough to overcome those. And our kids recognize that, you know, we, we just got to, we can't make her have those big boo-boos. What does it mean to the offense when, when Michael can make three catches average close to 27, 28 yards a catch to help open things up for Xavier? I mean, it was awesome. And we actually had him open some other times, you know what I mean? That could have some other ones. And so, um, you know, really happy for Coop. Coop actually had a really, really good football game, probably his best game since he's been here at the Naval Academy for four years. Not only caught well, but he blocked really well against, like, again, against Houston. And, you know, Houston is, you know, like UCF, one of the more athletic teams in our conference. And so I was proud of the way uh, Coop played uh, Coop played really well. And proud of the way that Xavier was able to find him? Yes, Xavier did a good job getting the ball off. Uh, finding him. So that was, that was definitely, you know, a plus, you know, uh, for those plays. Thanks coach. Thanks Scott. Wags. Hey coach. Um, I guess let's talk a little bit about central Florida. What have you seen on tape? Obviously they beat Boise. That speaks volumes. They played tight with Louisville, which we know is a good program. So I'm going to guess those two results alone say this is a good team again this year? Well, you know, they they should have beat Louisville. I mean, this – we I, I didn't need to watch their film this year to know how good they are. <laughs> you know what I mean? They've been one of the best, uh, you know, since Scott left, Coach Frost, you know, left. I mean, and during that time there, they, they've been one of the best teams in our league, one, been one of the best teams in the country. And so, you know, we didn't have to watch film to know that. But as we start to watch them – um, you know, they've done a really good job in recruiting, you know, obviously a combination of, uh, you know, Coach Frost, obviously before that with Josh, like, well, and also now with Gus Malzahn. I mean, they've had three really good coaches. They got really, three really good players. I mean, uh, they have, through that, they've had uh, three teams of really good personnel in the, in the players. So those are normally tough combinations. And like I always said, good coaches with good players. Um, you know, I'm not sure where the quarterback situation would be. Obviously, they had really good, you know, really elite quarterbacks over the years with McKenzie and, 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 and Dylan. You know, I mean, they have really good quarterbacks. So I don't know, you know, you don't know much about the other guy or what's, where they're going to be there. But they have so many weapons um, offensively, you know, I mean, to distribute the ball um, defensively, you know, I mean, it's like I told her guys, the guys are going to be just as good and not better than, you know, Houston as far as athletes. I mean, so we, we know this is going to be a tall order, um, big, fast, strong wags, <laughs> you know, all of the above. So it's, 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 it's going to be tough for us like it is every week. Well, as you mentioned, they've been consistently good now for going on a decade, I believe even before they joined the American Athletic Conference. What, uh, what do you think? Is that just a commitment from the administration to be very good in football and put resources in? But, I mean, it's pretty rare to be like a national type of program for this long like they have. Yeah, you know, I think Coach O'Leary had some good years. Um, but I think, you know, I think maybe more so when Coach Frost came there, you know what I mean? Then they, you know, I mean, I went undefeated and, you know, played in the New, Year, New Year's Day Bowl and did some stuff, you know, from, you know, had a lot of good years there. When, you know, a couple of years with Scott, some really big time years that, I mean, they're in the, in the conversation of, you know, national champion. I mean, they're that elite. And then obviously, you know, with Josh, they had some good teams too. You know, the, the pandemic was a little bit different year for everybody. So, you know, they're still good last year, but, you know, they maybe weren't at as good, but maybe, um, you know, for them not to be as good, I mean, that's maybe a, a 10-win team as opposed to a 12-win team, you know what I mean? So, 
I, I think a big part of it too is where they're at. You know, I've done a good, really good job in recruiting. Um, good coaches. I mean, and I haven't seen their facilities. You know, we saw their stadium, which is a tough place to play. Um, but you know, that area, you know, obviously Florida is a hotbed for NFL talent. It's you know, the most NFL players come from the state of Florida. Most Division One players come from Florida. You know, and so I think they're one of the biggest, you know, um, colleges, you know, universities enrollment wise in the in the nation. So I think they've played to their strengths, you know, a great place to go to school. A lot of students, they've done a great job recruiting. Uh, like you said, it has been a, uh, a commitment from their administration because to get coaches like that, you got to pay them, you know, obviously for a co guy like Coach Malzahn to go there and, you know, got it, you know, SEC coach. I mean, they've, they've had good coaches with good players. Can you talk a little bit about the resolve your both the coaching staff and the players have to turn this around? I mean, I I look at Diego Fago in the pre post game press conference, and it's he's got a little tear in his eye because he's so upset, but he's also got anger on his face because he's angry. And you know, I know he implored the guys, "Don't give up on the season. We can turn it around. All it takes is a way big win, like beating Central Florida." But I, and I'm sure that that Diego, he's a very emotional guy. But I'm sure he's not the only one who's talking like that. I, I think you might believe that you got the right guys on your team to turn this around. We got great leadership on our team. We got great young men. But I don't know if most of the kids in the country could do what our guys do. And that's just the truth. I mean, trying to go, try going to our prep school for a year, see who would, who would survive over there. Um, and we've had some great players. In fact, one of them was uh, McCray to play for Central Florida. Good player. I mean, we wish he was still on our team. It doesn't make you a bad person if you can't make it in the military. You know, I mean, I didn't serve in the military. There's a lot of us who haven't served in the military. It doesn't make you a bad person. And it's, it's not for everybody. And so the things that you go through at a service academy school, most college students don't want to do that. Like, what? I got I to gotta do that? I ain't doing that. You know, I mean, I, I got I to... Gotta, I got to, you know, go on watch, but on the weekend, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's just things that you do here that most people don't do. There's some tough kids here, man. They've been through a lot. Why? So these kids, the resolve, I've always told you, if you're still here at the Naval Academy after your naps year and your plebe year, you're a tough sucker. Cause I don't know if I could have made it, you know what I mean? So the resolve is, these are some resilient kids. Why it's really super resilient. Um, we're a proud program, you know, like I said, I mean, we're, you know, going into the season, we're tied for third and wins in this conference, which people have forgotten. And so, you know, we're not just like Mickey Mouse school that we, we won a lot of games in this conference. And, you know, we're struggling a little bit right now, but we ain't going anywhere. We're going to keep scrapping just like we did Saturday. And, you know, we, we know coming out of there, we, we had every chance to win that game. And, you know, we're going to have to play better against UCF to do that. But our guy, the resolve is definitely there from everybody. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm grateful for these condolence letters that I'm getting from friends. And, but nobody's died. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I'm just like, thank you. But, I mean, this is what we do for a living. I mean, this, this, this profession, like I've said many times, is not for everybody. And we're just, we're going to keep going. Our players are going to keep going. Our coaches are going to keep slugging it out. You know, I mean, we don't. We're not quitting. We're definitely not quitting. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, you mentioned McCray playing for Central Florida. I just – Loey Gilman made an interception for the San Diego Chargers yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we, we – you know, and we got a kid that's starting for the Ole Miss, their free safety, and we got another kid at Wake Forest. So – and like I said, they're great kids. And some kids – but, again, it doesn't make you a bad person not coming to school at the Naval Academy. But this is hard, man. It's not for everybody. Uh, Kareem Copeland. Hey, Kareem. Uh, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Um, I want to follow up on what I asked on um, on Saturday. Now that you've gotten to see the tape of Xavier, um, just curious, you know, what you liked, what you liked, um, what still needs to improve. Just kind of an overall thought after being able to go back and watch the tape. Well, he did some good things in the option game. Uh, he missed a couple reads, which, you know, like did all every option quarterback does. So I'm sure he'd like that back. Um, missed a couple checks. 
but he got us in the right place too a couple of times too. So, you know, there's some pros and cons there. Um, probably the biggest one though, just we had some shots though that we had guys open that, you know, we got to complete, so we got to throw. And, you know, we got some pressure, didn't see it. So if there's any critique of, of Xavier, this, we had some opportunities to put more points on the board and like, in a game like that, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get those, get those done. But I thought the kid did a lot of good things. Uh, tough environment, just a good team. Did some really good things, uh, but we left some points out there. And the thing with the quarterback, you get all the credit. You all, a lot of times you get all the blame too. And a big part of it, obviously, because the ball is always in your hands. You're making those decisions. So you got to make great decisions with it. And for the most part, he did. He did, you know, made good decisions, but he, he'll be the first to tell you that he missed a couple, but I mean, he's human. You know, I, I think sometimes we forget, or I, it almost seems that um, it's almost forgotten that how young he still is and that he's still kind of um, learning all this. And, and I'm just curious, from your perspective, having dealt with, you know, quarterbacks for all these years, how tough is it for him to be kind of thrown into this situation um, at such a young age and be asked to do so much? Yeah, it's, it's definitely tough, especially since, you know, he didn't have camp last year. Um, so, you, you know, last year was learning. I guess we're, we're so different in what we do. Not very many people do what we do anymore any, at any level. Uh, a lot, most high school uh, teams are in the gun like everybody else. And so just it's foreign for most kids to take a snap under center. And so that, that takes time too. So uh, the option mechanics of reading the option are, are unique and is really, there's a lot of details, very intricate. And so he's gotten much better at his mechanics, but it is tough cream, especially if it's not your background, which again, most kids, it's not your background. Most kids in high school, even athletic ones are in the gun, running the zone read and, you know, your spread. Um, there's not very many guys in high school under center that are running triple option stuff. And so it's definitely a transition. Um, you know, there is a lot thrown on the kid and there's a lot of pressure on him just being the quarterback, but being young too, you know, contributes to some of the, you know, the ups and downs of that position. And, you know, he's uh, not the most experienced kid, but he's a great kid and, he, you know, he comes to work every day and he's got a great attitude. That's what I was going to ask about his attitude. You know, is, is he a guy that stays pretty confident knowing that he's kind of, um, you know, there's there's growing pains, you know, regardless. And I'm just curious, how has he handled, like you said, you know, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations. How has he handled that part of it? Well, I know this he's a competitor because, you know, I can just see him in the locker room after the kids, the competitor, and it, and it, it kills him. I can just see the pain in his face. You know, uh, you know, and unfortunately, when you lose, you don't want to lose. But when you lose, you want to see that. You want to see what bothers people. And it, it definitely bothers Xavier. He's he's a competitor. And so you feel for the kid. He, I know he wants to play better, but he's a guy that comes to work every day. He's on the field early. You know, I mean, he, he's, he's putting in the work. And so I, that's why I'm encouraged by him that he's not happy with his play or the play on our offense, even though I thought we played much better this past game, um, he still recognizes the bar is high and he's he's attacking it. He's not uh, feeling sorry for himself. He, can, he continues to come to work. That's perfect. Appreciate it. I'll pass along to others. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Trace. Uh, hello, Coach. Trace Trolko, Sons of UCF Live Show. UCF quarterback Dylan Gabriel was hurt out indefinitely following the uh, the Louisville game. The Knights will turn to true freshman Mikey Keene. What's the challenge for your team in preparing for a quarterback that you don't have many looks at? Yeah, what you, it was just what you said. You don't have very many looks. We'd imagine that, I don't know, that you're not going to change your scheme too much. Maybe, you know, they they feature more plays than others. You know what I mean? So that's that's always the um, a tricky part. You don't you know when you don't have much film on guys, but you kind of watch what they do, try to see what they do schematically. Uh, but there obviously you have to be a lot of adjusting in the game. You try to see what he does, what his strengths are. Um, but I'm sure Coach Malzahn and his staff will play to his strengths, whatever they are. But when you don't have much tape on guys, you you don't really know. Um, you know we. I don't know. 
I guess it's for us, it's, you know, good because, you know, he's not playing because we recognize how good Dylan was. You know, I, I also, you know, actually know his dad. His dad and I played together at the University of Hawaii. So, you know, I'm really good friends with his father. So you hate for the kid that he's hurt, you know what I mean? Because he's a phenomenal football player and, you know, hopefully speedy recovery for him, but not hopefully not against us. But I just don't, I just, I, I don't know because like I said, we got a lot of tape on Dylan and we try to watch the, the plays that the new quarterback's in and, and, you know, you try to do your best from there. But you also don't know, they've also had a, a bye too. So, you know, you know, all the stuff that they're doing or what they're going to implement and or what they're going to emphasize and accentuate in their game plan. On defense, the Knights have been pretty stout against the run for the, through the first two games. They struggled a bit with Louisville's dual threat quarterback. How do you feel your line matches up with UCF's defensive line? Well, we normally don't match up with too many people. Uh, that's where we run the option. You know what I mean? So we just, we're just going to have to do the best we can. You know, again, that's why we run this offense because guys are normally bigger. And, and just like last week, I mean, Houston was way bigger than us. Um, and UCF has a lot of good football players just watching how big they are and, you know, how athletic they were and how they ran around. Um, it, it's scary. You know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, all we can do is what we can do. We're going to run our offense. But it's going to be tough moving the ball against them. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Trace. <clears throat> Phil Bergman. Hey, Coach. Uh, Phil Bergman, Navy Sports, NavySports.com. You've talked about not wanting to throw in the towel, about uh, constant improvement. What is the improvement you want to see? What's that next box you want to check off? Just uh, the mental mistakes that we normally don't do. We normally don't beat ourselves. and people beat us, you got to beat us. Well, we're going to make you play left-handed. We're going to make you hit a three-pointer off the glass. You know, I mean, if you make it, hey, you're better than us. Hallelujah. But, you know, we can't give easy layups, you know, and, and we just kind of feel like that's really, really first and foremost, we got to eliminate those. You know, just the mental mistakes that have killed us, uh, some of it in special teams, um, some of it on both sides of the ball, obviously mostly on offense. Uh, I want to continue to see our offensive line improve, but I was really encouraged the way we played last week. It's the best we played up front last year. I mean, uh, this year, you know, again, going into the Marshall game, they came into that game the previous year, the number one rushing defense in the country and the number one, you know, and, you know, we moved the ball against them. We want to be more consistent in the red zone, which we were better at this week. Um, but some of the stuff, I guess the biggest one I got, I'll say, Phil, is the self-inflicted wounds. You know, we, we, that, we can't do that. We're not good enough. We, if somebody beats us, we want to make them knock us out. You know, we have our hands up, but they punch through our gloves, not have our hands down to get socked in the face. And unfortunately, we've had our hands down too much this year, which isn't normally us. We're normally a smart football team. Um, we've had some 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 blunders that, have cost us games. You know what I mean? Like I said, uh, the, the center QB exchange won and was one to me. I mean, that you can't, that can't happen if you're going to win games. You can't turn the ball over on a 23 yard line and expect to win. So those are the things, self inflicted wounds. With a team like UCF coming here, what's your message uh, to the midshipmen and the fans on the impact that they can have on making this a home field advantage? Well, we always need them. I mean, you know, we've had great home field advantages. You know, we haven't played so great in at home. We played much better against Houston. So hopefully we can build off that. That's the our, our, our mantra this week, just to build off the positive stuff that happened against Houston. You know, have our, our fans behind us against a really good UCF team and get in there and scrap, you know what I mean, and, and fight and do the best we can. Thank you. Just have a couple minutes left. I'll make a quick pass through. Wags, you have anything else? Yes. Um, Coach, when you reviewed the film, what did you see on the punt return that it seemed like the entire right side of the field was open, which would lead me to believe that guys weren't in their right lanes. Um, what, what did you see as to how that occurred? Well, we were trying to directionally kick, which we always do, you know what I mean? So we can kind of, you know, limit the field a little bit. So we kind of 
kind of kicked our coverage and we kicked the ball where we didn't want, so we had to adjust. You know what I mean? Because we're always trying to pin people. And so, we, you know, it was a great – lengthwise, it was a great kick, but it wasn't where we wanted the ball. You know what I mean? So then we all had – everybody had to adjust lanes. And with that much space, we had a couple guys out of their – their gaps or their lane, their their coverage lanes, which I'm probably turned as a major boo boo, and so those are the kind of thing I guess kind of feels you know kind of with Phil's question. Just normally we don't do that. Normally we're you know we're pretty good coverage lanes, but the kick also got us out of there too. You know we're expecting the ball to be a certain place and it wasn't, so we had to adjust, and and it was such a great kick too that I'll kicked our coverage a little bit. So, I mean, obviously we have special teams playing such a big role in all three games to date. Is it, I mean, I know you put emphasis on it every week, but is there, do you almost have to put more than normal to try to correct these things that are causing game changing uh, results? It's, it's, uh, it's the, the top of our crisis list on our football team. It's, it's number one in my mind, it's the number one thing right now to get, we're not there on, you know, last week it was offense and we're better at offense. I thought we played better, but we're still not there. At least I'm encouraged that I feel like I saw some improvement in Numbing Wags where the, to me, what's moved to the top of the crisis bucket for our team is we, we can't have all those major blunders in the special teams. That's like I said, that's, we've always been a solid special teams. I don't know. You know, I'm not going to say we return kicks for touchdowns or, we blocked a ton of kicks, but we haven't gotten beat in special teams. You know, it's been a place where we've kind of been solid there. And so it's at the top of our bucket. There's, we're looking at everything and anything as far as making sure we get that as far as personnel, the way we coach it, who coach it. I mean, just the whole thing. Uh, Cause that's, to me, that's at the top of the list. And last for me, I saw the Thai Lavatai was dressed and participated in warmups, but Xavier went the distance. Has Xavier won the job or was Ty not quite physically ready to go? And you, is there still a competition there? Yeah, so Ty wasn't available last week. It had been an emergency case only. Um, but uh, he's back. He's back this week. So, you know, we're going to open back up. I mean, it's he's back this week. So, but yeah, he, uh, he'll be 100% this week. Can you walk me through the 40-yard touchdown run, what you saw and why you were able to, to break free and get to the end zone? Yeah, so I uh, started off with a good drive. Uh, we had a we had an idea how these uh, linebackers are going to be playing. Uh, Coach Jasper actually called the play in practice and said, you know, this is going to be a touchdown. And sure enough, it was. Uh, we were able to, you know, get the linebackers out of there. Safety screamed out uh, and, you know, pulled the football and there was a wide open hole and all I had to do was just, you know, it was a foot race to the end zone. What's your biggest focus going into the UCF game? Um, just figure out, you know, where I could be better uh, as an individual. Um, figure out how I can, you know, help this team move on and, you know, learn from our mistakes and keep moving forward. Uh, and just, you know, do what we can to, to, to win the game. Uh, we, we really need a win. We were close. We did well. Uh, but we need to just do, you know, touch up on a couple things. Uh, so personally, I'm going to focus on, you know, some of the mistakes I made personally. Uh, make sure I don't make them again and uh, just do a good job leading this football team. And what's it like for you to have a receiver like a Michael Cooper out there that uh, can catch those big passes for you? Yeah, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, Coop does a great, great job getting open. Uh, the line did a good job protecting. Uh, we have a lot of good receivers, uh, you know, Mark Walker, uh, Michael Cooper, uh, Jaden number the list goes on. Um, you know, it's my job to get the ball there, and I know he's going to make a play when, when he gets it. So I'm super, super grateful to have him as a receiver. Thanks. Good luck Saturday. Kareem. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Kareem. Xavier, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Um, quickie for you. You know, you you just touched on it a little bit, you know, saying, you know, figure your focus is figuring out, you know, where you can be better as an individual. You know, can you can you detail that a little bit um, for us? Just the, some of the specifics that you plan to work on or are at the forefront of your mind, I suppose. Of course, uh, like I said, I think we did a lot of good things well as a unit. Um, I was really proud of our guys, but, you know, individually, um, I got I to try to find, you know, some passing lanes to, just to see the field better. Um, I think taking pre-snaps read will help being that I'm, you know, more of a shorter guy. 
Um, you know, taking pre-step reads and anticipating where guys are going to be on the field before it happens will give me, you know, better opportunity to get the ball out of my hands. Um, tighten up on some of my reads. Um, I think there there are a couple of plays where I could have got the team into a better, uh, gotten the offense into a better play. Um, but yeah, you know, obviously those are things that, you know, we come back, we watch the film, say could have done this better, could have done that better. But like I said, overall, I think our, our offensive line fought really hard. They, uh, they're they moving the defense really well up front. Um, so if we can just put all the pieces together, I think, you know, we're going to be a really good football team. I want to ask about the good stuff also. You know, what what was what were you most happy with as far as your individual progression um, last game? Or really the progression throughout the season to this point, you know, what, what, what steps have you taken forward that you're, you know, proud of and happy that, you know, is starting to click for you? Yeah. Um, I just think the overall movement of the offense, you know, football is the ultimate team game and one man can't do it by himself. You know, it's impossible. Um, and when, you know, when all aspects are working together, you know, we have results like we did these past couple of weeks. Um, but overall, as a unit, I think we just did really good. I, there are a couple of passes where I stuck in there, you know, took the hit and got the ball out of my hands and was able to make, let the wide receivers make some plays. I think that was a huge step. And then there's also room for improvement at that same level. So, you know, coming out of a game, you know, when you do a couple of things well, you score a big touchdown, you know, everyone thinks, oh, you know, everything's great, everything's great. But there's always room for improvement uh, and wins and losses. So, you know, I just got to, like I said, just touch up on a couple of things. Uh, you know, keep moving forward. And like I said, um, just do whatever I can to help this team win. And one more, I'm just curious, you know, how are you feeling mentally? I was just talking to Ken a little bit about this. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure on the quarterback position, no matter what. And, you know, you're still young in your career and, and kind of, you know, got thrown in the mix last year and progressing this year. I'm just curious, you know, it would be real easy to get frustrated, but it seems like, and it sounds like that you've been able to kind of stay in a good mental space. Um, how's that part been for you? Yeah, well, you know, this is the position I signed up for. I've been playing quarterback all my life. Um, and, you know, everything, you're the hero when you win and when you lose, sometimes you can be looked at as the villain. So it's definitely a, you know, it takes a lot of, you know, mental capacity to play this position, uh, but I wouldn't want to be anywhere else, you know, helping this team, you know, get in the best position to win games. Um, so, you know, obviously, you know, when you win, things are good. Uh, and we haven't had any of those yet. Um, but just being able to stay, you know, open-minded, take the small victories as they come uh, and just keep getting better. If I can get better each day, you know, that'll just help this team be better overall. And that's my main goal. Cool. Cool. That's perfect. I appreciate you. Thank you. Trace. Trace Trollco, Sons of UCF. As you've looked at UCF, what stands out about the Knights' defense so far? Uh, they're very fast, very athletic, uh, very athletic guys, um, very aggressive to the football. Um, so, you know, so far, just the athletic team. But, you know, just about every team we play, you know, in our conference is athletic. So, you know, we're going to have a good game plan. I know the coaches will get us, you know, you know, uh, a good game plan for this week. Uh, we just got to go out and, and execute it. Why was Houston more effective in the second half against you in the last game? Um. I think we just shot ourselves in the foot uh, multiple times. I think every time that we've had negative drives or negative plays, if you, if you look back, um, it's, we do it to ourselves, um, you know, offside penalties, misread, uh, mispass, something like that. So if we could just limit um, the self-inflicted wounds, I think you'll see a lot different outcome uh, coming these next couple of weeks. Thank you. Diane Roberts. Uh, Diane Roberts, Behind the Lines Academy Football Report. Hi, Xavier. Wondering um, if you had to describe your team right now. Coach Ken said that he is encouraged. So given where you are, even though you're 0-3, how would you describe where this team is? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, the same as Coach Ken would. I'd, I'd say I'm really encouraged You know, by the way we came out. Uh, we have a lot of football left to play, a lot of games left to play in. You know, if you're getting worse, then there's something to be worried about. But that's not the case for us. We're getting better. Obviously, it shows, you know, when we play Navy football, you know, we could put up points. And like I said, if we just get rid of the mental mistakes on our part and not let us beat ourselves, um, I think, you know, we'll be really, really good. So I'm definitely encouraged by the way we came out and played on both sides of the ball. Uh, and I'm really excited to, you know, get after these next, you know, this next stretch uh, with this team. A lot of coaches would say that they learn a lot about their team through adversity as opposed to success. 
and you know, leaders on teams will say the same thing. What have you learned about your Navy team through this 0-3 start? Right. Uh, yeah, football is the game of life. Um, I think it, it resembles life a lot. You know, uh, you know, you go into battle and sometimes you're going to get punched in the face pretty hard. Uh, but it's all, you know, how you bounce back from it. Um, and, I, and I'm really happy about the way we've been able to handle adversity. You know, all the critics, all the naysayers about our football team and, you know, everyone else's opinion. But, you know, we're not worried about that. We're about ourselves and how we can move forward. And uh, I'm really happy and proud of my guys for, you know, just putting their heads down and going to work these last two weeks and coming out and showing a better result, showing what we can do. We just got to carry on with that momentum going into this next week. You mentioned naysayers and uh, coach said that he's actually received condolence letters from folks. I'm wondering what kinds of things you're receiving. Are you receiving text messages or direct messages or are people calling you and, and what are they saying and what are you saying in response to them? Um, you know, yeah, you definitely get a lot of those because, you know, there's a little bit different of a result this past game. You know, we looked, you know, better overall as an offense. Um, but I try not to get too high, get too low on anything. Um, there's always room for improvement. And at the end of the day, the main goal is to win. So um, even when you do win, you know, you never get satisfied. Um, so it's, it's nice to see that people recognize. But at the end of the day, when you lose, you know, some of those people are going to be the same people that are saying, you know, you suck, you, you can't do this, you can't do that. So I, I always appreciate it, um, but I'm not, I try not to look into it too much. Just focus on first myself, uh, figure out what I can do better and then how I can help the team move forward. Sean Grogan. Hey, Dave, you're Sean Grogan, Press Fox Sports. I'm interested in your lacrosse background. Um, are there any elements or skills you have from your time playing high school lacrosse that you think helped make you a better quarterback, uh, specifically at the position or maybe more specifically in the Navy offense? Yeah, I just think my quickness. I think I'm built for the for the Navy offense, you know, the option game and being at the quarterback, uh, you know, has the ball in their hands a lot. I played uh, attack in lacrosse, so the exposition, you know, I was kind of, they call that the quarterback of the offense in lacrosse right. too. So it's having the, having the ball in my hand a lot and, you know, being forced to make decisions that, you know, can put the game on the line. Um, I kind of live for that, that pressure. Um, I've kind of been used to it my whole life. So I think there's definitely some similarities uh, to both sports. And what was it that ultimately uh, led you to choose football when you were such a highly rated recruit and had kind of had your choice at a lot of schools in lacrosse? Just my love for the game. I would say there's no sport like football. Uh, I just love it so much. And I don't think I'd be able to, you know, go to a school and just play lacrosse and be able to, you know, tailgate for the football games and watch the football games without having any regret with my decision. Um, so, you know, there's, there's no sport like football. I loved it so much. I, I wasn't ready to stop playing. Great. Thank you. Uh, Phil Bergman. Hey, Xavier, you're still really early in your college career. Having a first half and a first drive like you did, what type of confidence does it give you that you know you can play against the best of the best in the country? Yeah, I mean, internally, you always have to have confidence, whether the drives are going bad, uh, whether the drives are going good, you know, whether you're 0-2 or 2-0. Um, but just to see that, you know, just to actually put it into effect was, was amazing to see. Just the, the life, the energy that it brought this team, the coaches uh, felt alive for the first time in a while, which which was really good. We just got to finish now. Got to got to got to put a whole game together. Got to be perfect. Uh, when that, that that day is going to come soon, uh, when it does, it's going to feel real real good. Thank you, Bill Wagner. And I just had a quick follow up of to what Sean was asking you about. Um, there's a guy at Maryland named Dante Trader who's playing for the football team right now, and you know Dante. I do. Yeah, sir. Okay. And he's uh, he's going to play lacrosse in the spring, um, but uh, he's a D-back. Uh, do you think it's impossible to do both when you're a quarterback? And do you have any hopes of ever playing lacrosse for Navy? Um, I don't think anything's ever impossible. Uh, you know, I, I made a decision to to decommit from my previous commitment at the University of North Carolina and chase my dreams. Um and I don't think anything's ever impossible, but I think at this moment right now, I'm focused on this team and football and, uh, you know, what I can do to help this team win. You know, I gave a lot of things up to come here and chase my dreams and help this team win and join the brotherhood. Um, I don't think I'm done with lacrosse yet. 
Um, but that's definitely not where my focus is right now. I'm focused on, you know, where my feet are one day at a time, making sure that this team can win games and, you know, get Navy back to where we should be. And then with regard to the two, three and outs at the beginning of the second half, I mean, obviously those are killers. I mean, we know Navy's not going to score on every possession, but you do like to move, pick up a couple first downs, punt, because there's the field position battle, the keeping the defense off the field element. Um, kind of talk about how harmful those three and outs are and, you know, how you eliminate them. Yeah, they're tough. You know, it's, it's coming out of the half. You know, we, we don't – we play for scoring, you know, putting points up on the board, but we also play to help our defense out, take time off the clock and move. And you know, coming out and having two, three and outs out of the half, you know, that's a, that's a time where we need to jump on them, gain momentum back, move the ball. And we didn't do that. So those are the little things I'm talking about is yeah, we had, you know, a good first half, had a couple of good drives in the second half, but being able to put it all together, eliminate those, um, that'll, that'll, that, that's when we're going to, you know, come together and be complete. Um, so like I say, you got to go back and figure out, okay, what happened in those drives? Where did I go wrong on those drives? Where did we go wrong as a unit? And uh, do our best to eliminate those. You've got a couple home games under your belt at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. I know the guys last year probably told you what it was like to play before a packed house. What is it like running out in that field and, and playing in front of both the brigade of midshipmen, all your classmates and everyone you know at school and the fans there with all the history that's there and all the names of the battles on the facade and all that's gone before you. Yeah, it's a really special thing uh, just to, you know, represent this institution, uh, you know, all the, all the people that have come before and after, you know, everyone that's, you know, in service, out of service, whatever it may be. It's just, there's a lot to play for. Uh, and when you, when you run through that, that tunnel and onto the field, uh, you know, you have the whole stadium behind you. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's hard, it's a hard feeling to describe, uh, just, it goes straight to the heart. Um, and it, you know, it makes you want to play just a little bit better, you know, for all those that have come before you come after you. So it's a special feeling, something I'll cherish forever. Um, and it's going to be even better when we get our first win in there this season.